Hello again, and welcome back to another edition of the Wiccan Conservative. Today, I just wanted to pop in real quick and remind you guys, remember these? I don't know if you can see them very well. I am uh, recording on my phone today. I will tell you what they are. They are letters to the incoming Senator John Ossoff. And these are return to sender letters. The interesting thing about these letters is the fact that I sent three to John Ossoff and three to Raphael Warnock, just as they had won the runoff elections here in Georgia. And these constituent letters were pertaining to the constitutionality of the impending impeachment of uh, 45th President Donald J. Trump. So in these interesting constituent letters were very encouraging words and actual legal memorandum from Christian Hall that I put into the letters to encourage these senators to look at the actual constitutionality of the impending impeachment. And it's interesting because these letters are dated uh, February 10th, 2021. And all of the letters, I don't know, bear with me here, you guys, they're, they're opened. They were sliced opened. They were read. They were screened um, by two Senate post office people, I assume, both on the same day because they were, they were stamped. Um, the interesting thing is, as soon as I got them back, I went and did some research, which is what my video is about today. As you can see on your screen is a article from wired.com, and it says what it takes to make Congress actual, actually listen. And I'm not going to go through this entire article with you guys, because you can find it and you can read it yourself. But it, I believe it's from 2018, and it's very interesting the way that they explain to you how Congress goes through your phone calls, your emails, your social media posts, things, things that are from the constituents to the representative. And the, the thing that I found that was... I guess the most intriguing part about all of this, it, it, it led me down the path of thinking differently about what we call the swamp and, and why we can't put our finger on exactly who the members of this swamp actually are. And I'm going to take you to a couple different websites here. Now, this is the one from Wired.com. This is uh, another one from the uh, Congress Congressional Members website. I believe this is the proper listing here. So this website will actually tell you who all the congressional members and staff organizations are. When I first started down this path, I knew that representatives and houses and the, you know, different parts of the legislator had people in their, you know, aid that they, they help them a lot. They do their odds and ends filings. They screen their phone calls. They go through the emails. They do all these things, but it, I guess it never really dawned on me exactly how much power these people have when it comes to actually getting the feedback from the constituency to the representative. So if you're interested in finding out who your congressional staff members and the staff organizations are, I don't know any, uh, any of my followers follow Chris Ann Hall. She was actually just talking on her last episode about the uh, different members of the House having uh, political allegiance to organizations, uh, and that's what basically political parties are, are members only clubs and very exclusive parts of the political system. 
But it goes even deeper than that when you look into who is actually doing the dirty day-to-day -day work for these people once they get into the office. So let me show you another website here. This is the uh, congress.org actual like lookup website. So if you, this is another way to look up your congressional members and your staff and what their titles are and things like that. But if you read this website, it says each member of Congress has staff to assist him or her during uh, communication with Congress. And it's helpful to know the titles of these people. You can do your own research and you will find many, many websites that will tell you that these people handle everything prior to the representatives. So when you start to actually think about why your representative votes the way that he votes or why he is so, uh, he or she is so out of touch with their base or their um, people that they're supposed to be representing, you need to look into who is staffed in their offices. Because I got to thinking that if these people are allowing a lot of activists and, and young political aspirants to be in their presence and to handle their day-to-day -day schedules, then this could be the reason why they're so absolutely misinformed about what their base actually wants and what their constituency is actually saying. So obviously I, I, I found this website to be very useful. It's uh, congress.org, congressional staff and titles. I'm sure you can do your own generic search to find out more information about uh, your local and state representatives and, and who's actually in those particular staffing houses and, and what type of mindset those people actually have. Because if they're screening our letters and they don't like what you have to say, then that piece of mail or that piece of feedback will never make it to your representative. Now, I found that th this is actually a little bit more recent and obviously with the issues that are going on in Ukraine, which I plan on addressing those issues in another video soon to come and the issues going on here with the truckers convoy and the inflation and everything else. This has kind of been pushed underneath the rug. This is from Politico, and it says that congressional staffers launch unionization push with Democrats' support. And I encourage you to go look up this particular uh, article as well. This is from February 4th, 2022. This is a picture of staff, uh, staff members and lawmakers attend a House committee uh, on financial services, service hearing on Capitol Hill, December 1st. Sorry, I can't read with my sunglasses on. So that's why I'm not reading these articles very much to you. But n these people are now upset. The long and short of this is these people are now upset because they feel that they are doing all the dirty work for our representatives and they're not being paid for it. So now they want to go in and unionize so that they can set a pay amount for the job that they are doing. Meanwhile, we're getting our letters sent back to us uh, from these, from I, uh, I have to assume from a filter or a representative or uh, post, uh, Senate Post Office 24, screened by number 24 and number, I believe it's 10, 16, 16 and 24 in the Georgia Senate Post Office screens mail uh, for John Ossoff and sends it back to the constituency. So that is all I have for you guys today. I told you that it was going to be short and sweet, and I actually think that I nailed it this time. <laughs> so on that note, be on the lookout for a uh, video addressing the Ukraine situation and possibly a separate video addressing the inflation and what is coming down the pike in the world of the truckers. So I will have that on deck for you guys and I will see you on the next one.